The Gift of the Maggie Written by O. Hintry O. Hintry's The Gift of the Maggie is a story of Jim and Della, a young couple of modest means who loved each other very much. The plot revolves around the struggle the couple had to undergo to buy surprise Christmas gifts for each other with the little money they had. One dollar eighty-seven cents, that was all, and sixty cents of it was in pennies. Penny saved one and two at a time by negotiating with the man at the market who sold vegetables and meat, negotiating until one's face burnt with the silent knowledge of being poor. Three times Della counted it. One dollar eighty-seven cents. The next day would be Christmas. There was clearly nothing to do but sit down on the shabby little porch and cry. So Della cried which instigated the thought that life is made up of little cries and smiles, with more cries than smiles. So, in this story, we can identify the two characters, Della and Jim. And the plot revolves around the struggle the couple had to undergo to buy surprise Christmas gifts for each other with the little money they had. While the lady of the home is slowly growing quieter, we can take a look at the home. Furnished a room at the cost of dollar eight a week, there is little more to say about it. In the hall below was a letter box too small to hold a letter. There was an electric bell, but it could not make a sound. Also, there was a card beside the door bearing the name Mr. James Dillingham Yen. When the name was placed there, Mr. James Dillingham, Dillingham Yen was having a brief period of prosperity. Now, when he was being paid only $1.20 a week, the name seems too long and important. It should perhaps have been an unassuming Mr. James T. Young, but when Mr. James Dillingham Young entered the furnished rooms, his name became very short indeed. Mr. James Dillingham Young put her arms warmly about him and called him Jim. You have already met her. She is Della. So their house is very small. They don't have enough things. They have only an electric well, but it could not make a sound. Then a small lecture box, shabby sofa that we learned from the first paragraph itself. So they lead a very simple life and now James is being paid only dollar twenty. Della finished her crying and dried her face. She stood by the window and looked out unhappily at a grey cat walking along a grey fence in a grey backyard. Tomorrow would be Christmas Day and she had only one dollar and eighty-seven cents to buy her husband, Jim, a gift. So she is very sad because she wanted to buy something uh, precious for her husband, something fine and rare, something close to being worthy of the honour of belonging to Jim. There was a tall glass mirror between the windows of the room. Suddenly, Della turned from the window and stood before the glass mirror and looked at herself. Her eyes were shining, but her face had lost its color within 20 seconds. 
that means she got an idea you know what is then i need idea let's see mr and mrs james dellingham young have two possessions which they valued one was jim's gold time piece the watch that had been his father's and his grandfather's the other was della's hair so there were two possessions what are they jim's gold time piece and della's hair we have five new words in the section negotiate to reach an agreement by discussion shabby in bad condition through long use or lack of care instigate to start something to bring about prosperity the situation in which one is rich and successful and assuming simple without pretension despite his influential position he has an dash personality see which one of the word is suitable here so it is unassuming john repainted his mailbox because it was looking shabby rewrite the sentence with shabbiness we all know shabbiness is the noun form of shabby so there will be a change when you write the key to this exercise will be given in a separate video so you are requested to go through all the activities and write down the answers in your notebook naming words are called nouns there are four types of noun common noun name of a person place or thing used in general sense then proper noun name of a particular person place or thing like john ernakulam television abstract noun idea qualities and feeling that can cannot be seen heard or touched like justice responsibility love angry etc then we have collective noun names of groups of collections of persons places things and animals now let's see what is a pronoun a pronoun is a word used instead of a noun so given below is a sentence from the text pick out the pronouns in the sentence and write them down in the table given below along with the nouns for which they are used so here we have bella finished her crying and dried her face so her is a pronoun for della then we have they what is the noun for they here it is expenses and the third one electric bell has which one here it is used instead of electric bell now we have some understanding text questions the key to this will be in a separate video you are requested to write down the answers in your notebook without fail while gazing at her image in the mirror jella was reminded of the prized possessions of the family which of these possessions do you think jella made use for buying gifts for her husband had the queen sheba lived in their building bella would have let her hair hang out the window to dry just to depreciate the value of queen jewels had king solomon been the janitor 
with all this treasure piled up in the basement jim would have pulled out his watch every time he passed just to see him pluck at his beard with envy so now tellas beautiful hair fell about her shining like a brown waterfall it reached below her knees and made itself almost like a covering for her and then quickly she put it up again once she faltered for a minute and stood still while a tear or two splashed on the worn red carpet without wasting much time bella ran down the street to the hair goods mar- merchant Madame Saffroni and sold her hair for $20. The next two hours went by as if they had been. Bella looked in all the stores to choose a gift for Jim. She found it at last. It surely had been made for Jim and no one else. It was a chain, simple round rings of silver. It was perfect for Jim's gold watch. As soon as she saw it, she could see it. she knew that it must be for him it was like him quite and with great value she gave the shopkeeper 21 dollars and she hurried home with 87 cents that was left when della arrived home her excitement faded to a little prudence and reason she began to repair what was left of her hair the hair had been ruined by her love and her desire to give a special gift so what happened she sold her hair to a hair goods merchant and she is back with a gift for jim and what is that it is a chain for jim's gold watch it is a silver chain and she is trying to make her hair that means uh, she began to repair what was left of her ha- hair and the repairing the ravage was a very big job a mammoth task within 40 minutes her head was covered with tiny close laying curls that <clears throat> made her hair look wonderful like a schoolboy jim was never late Della held the silver chain in her hand and sat near the door when she heard her his footstep on the stairway down on the first flight and she turned white for just a moment she had a habit of saying a little silent prayer about the simplest everyday things and now she whispered please god make him think i am still pretty and finally jim stepped in he looked thin and very serious poor fellow he was only 22 and to be burdened with a family he needed a new coat and gloves to keep his hands warm so actually what uh, really needs for him he needed a new coat and gloves to keep his hands warm jim stopped inside the door as immovable as a dog smelling a bird his eyes were fixed upon the la there was an expression in them that she could not read and it frightened her it was not anger nor surprise nor fear nor any of the sentiments that she had been prepared for she simply stared at her fixedly with that particular expression on his face bella went to him jim my love she cried do not look at me that way 
I had my hair cut and sold because I could not have lived through Christmas without giving you a gift. My hair will grow out again. I just had to do it. My hair grows very fast. Say Merry Christmas, Jim. And let us be happy. You do not know what a nice, what a beautiful nice gift I have for you. You have cut off your hair? Asked Jim. Cut it off and sold it, said Jella. Don't you think me just as well? I'm the same person without my hair, right? Jim looked about the room as if he were looking for something. You say your hair is gone? He asked. You need not look for it, said Della. It is sold. I tell you, sold and gone too. It is Christmas Eve, boy. Be good to me, for it was cut for you. Maybe the hairs of my hair were numbered. She went on with sudden serious sweetness. But nobody could ever count my love for you. Shall I put the meat on Jim? Jim seemed to awaken quickly and put his arms around Della. Then he took a package from his cot and threw it on the table. Do not make any mistakes about me, Jell. He said, I don't think there is any haircut that could make me like my girl any less. But if you will open that package, you may see why you had frightened me at first. White fingers quickly tore the string and paper. There was an ecstatic scream of, scream of joy and then, alas, it changed to tears and cries, requiring the man of the house to use all his skill to calm his wife. So something was there in that packet, which made the luck cry. So what was that? Let's see what was Jim's gift. There was an ex scream of joy and then alas a change to tears and cries requiring the man of the house to hold to use all his skill to calm his wife for there was there were the combs the special set of objects to hold her hair that Della had wanted ever since she saw them in shop window beautiful combs made of shells with jewels at the edge just the color to wear in the beautiful hair that was no longer hers. They cost a lot of money, she knew, and her heart had wanted them without ever hoping to have them. And now the beautiful combs were hers, but the hair that would have touched them was gone. But she held the comb to herself, and soon she was able to Look up with a smile and say, My hair grows so fast, Jim. Then Della jumped up like a little burnt cat and cried, Oh, oh, Jim had not yet seen his beautiful gift. She happily held it out to him. In her open hands, the silver chain seemed so bright, the metal seemed to flash with a reflection of her ardent spirit. Isn't it wonderful, Jim? I looked all over town to find it. You will have to look at the look at the time a hundred times a day now. Give me your watch. I want to use I want to see how it looks on it. Instead of obeying, Jim fell on the couch and put his hands under the back of his head and smiled. Dell said he. Let us put our Christmas gift away and keep them a while. They are too nice to use just right now. I sold my gold watch to get the money to buy the set of combs for your hair. And now, why not put the meat on? The Magi or the Maggie were wise men, wonderfully wise men who brought gifts to baby Jesus. They invented the art of giving Christmas gifts. 
being wise their gifts were wise ones and the i have told you the story of two young people who most unwisely gave for each other the greatest treasure of their house but in a in a last word to the wise of these let it be said that of all who give gifts they too were the wisest everywhere they are wisest they are the magi so that's it so for the <clears throat> for this good gift man so this for this uh, christmas what happened they had to set aside their gift the story concerns james and della a young couple who despite their poverty they try to give each other an elegant gift on christmas eve della sold her beautiful hair and what about jim jim sold his antique gold watch <laughs>